Ever wondered how web applications are designed? Today we'll dive into one of the popular software design patterns known as MVC, short for Model View Controller. MVC is a design pattern that separates the application into three interconnected components. This separation improves flexibility, modularity, and maintainability, making it a favorite among developers. Picture MVC as a three-way street. Each lane represents a component, and each has a particular role to play in the journey of creating a web application. The first lane is the model, which represents the application's data and business logic. It's like the engine of our vehicle, powering the application with data and rules. Then we have the view, which is responsible for presenting the data to the user in a user-friendly format. Think of it as the vehicle's dashboard, displaying all the necessary information in an easy-to-read manner. Lastly, we have the controller, acting as an intermediary between the model and the view. It's like the driver, steering the application based on user input and updating the model accordingly. These three components work together, each with their unique responsibilities, to form a coherent, functional web application. And the beauty of MVC is that each component can be developed, tested, and modified independently. This modularity allows for better code reuse, scalability, and parallel development. But what's even more exciting is the flexibility MVC offers. It allows for different implementations of each component, enabling developers to choose the most appropriate technology or framework for each part of the application. In essence, MVC is not just a design pattern, it's a powerful tool that aids in developing robust, scalable and maintainable web applications. And the best part? It's a widely adopted pattern, with many web development frameworks such as Spring MVC, Django, and Ruby on Rails providing tools and conventions for implementing each component. In the next few minutes, we'll explore the three components of MVC, the model, the view, and the controller. We'll start with the model, the heart of any application. The model is like the brain of the system. It's responsible for all the data and the business logic. Its core role is to encapsulate the state of the application, which includes the data and any related behavior. The model is data-focused. It provides methods for accessing and manipulating the data it holds. It interacts with databases or perhaps even external services to fetch, update or store data. In essence, the model is the gatekeeper of data. It ensures that all data that enters or leaves the system is accurate, consistent and conforms to the rules and regulations of the application's business logic. Let's illustrate this with an example. Consider a web-based bookstore application. The model in this scenario might include classes for books, customers and orders. The book class might have attributes like title, author and price, and methods for checking availability or retrieving detailed information. The customer class could include data like name, contact info and purchase history, as well as methods for adding or removing items from a shopping cart. And the order class might track the items, quantities, prices and statuses of orders, with methods for updating or cancelling them. All these classes interact with a database, fetching data when needed, updating it after changes, and storing new data when generated. They ensure that at any given moment, the state of the application accurately reflects the current state of the world, all the books, customers, and orders in our virtual bookstore. The model is a crucial component of the MVC architecture because it encapsulates the core logic and data of the application. It's the source of truth that the rest of the system relies on. And since it's isolated from the user interface and input handling, it can be tested, updated, or replaced independently without disrupting the rest of the system. Now that we've covered the model, we'll move on to the view, the component that interacts with the users. Next, we have the view, the face of the application. The view is the component that presents the data to the user in a user-friendly format. It's the part of the application that users interact with. It's the storefront window, showcasing what's inside. To understand the view, let's picture it like the display of a bookstore. The books are neatly arranged, the prices are clear, and the categories are easy to navigate. In the context of web applications, this is achieved using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The view represents these user interface elements. It receives data from the model, and based on that data, it generates the user interface. For instance, when a customer browses a list of books, the view receives data about the books from the model and presents it in an easily digestible format, say, a neatly organized grid with book covers, titles, and prices. 
The view is the interpreter. It's the component that takes the raw, unprocessed data from the model and turns it into something that users can understand and interact with. It formats the data, embellishes it with visual elements, and presents it to the user. However, it's important to note that the view typically does not contain business logic. Its job is to present data and not to process it. It might include some presentation logic for formatting data, but the heavy lifting is done by the model and the controller. Let's go back to our bookstore example. The view could include HTML templates for displaying book details, order forms, and customer information. When a customer clicks on a book, the view receives the book's data from the model and displays the book's details using an HTML template. In essence, the view is the user-friendly face of the application. It's the component that turns raw data into a visual narrative, making the application accessible and usable to the end user. With the view covered, let's talk about the final piece of the puzzle, the controller. Lastly, we have the controller, the component that connects the model and the view. The controller is the heart of the MVC architecture, acting as an intermediary and managing the flow of information between the model and the view. It's like the conductor of a symphony, ensuring everything works in harmony. The controller has two main responsibilities. Firstly, it receives user input from the view. This could be anything from a simple click on a web page to a complex form submission. The controller processes this input and determines the appropriate response. For instance, in our bookstore example, if a user clicks on a book, the controller determines what information to display, such as the book's title, author, and price. Secondly, the controller invokes actions on the model. Based on the user input, the controller updates the model accordingly. In the bookstore scenario, if a user adds a book to their shopping cart, the controller would update the model to reflect this action, increasing the quantity of the book in the cart. The controller is also responsible for preparing data to be displayed by the view. After updating the model, the controller retrieves the necessary data and sends it to the view for presentation. For example, if a user decides to check out and buy the books in their cart, the controller would gather the necessary data, such as book details and total price, and send it to the view to display a summary and a payment form. In essence, the controller is the glue that binds the model and the view together. It ensures that user interactions are properly processed and reflected in the model, and that the view always presents the most up-to-date data. With its ability to manage complex interactions and maintain a seamless flow of information, the controller plays a crucial role in enhancing the user experience and ensuring the overall functionality of the application. With all three components explained, we can now bring it all together. Now you might be wondering why use MVC, let's discuss the advantages. The first and foremost advantage of MVC is its separation of concerns. With MVC, the application's data, user interface, and control flow are divided into three distinct components. This division not only makes your code easier to manage and maintain, but also enhances its readability. Another significant benefit of MVC is its inherent modularity. Each component can be developed, tested, and modified independently. This allows for better code reuse and scalability. You can make changes to one component without affecting the others, thus reducing the risk of introducing bugs. MVC's flexibility is another advantage worth noting. This architectural pattern doesn't tie you down to a specific technology or framework. You have the freedom to choose the most suitable technology for each component, which can significantly improve your application's overall performance. The MVC design pattern also facilitates parallel development. With clearly defined roles for each component, multiple developers can work on different parts of the application simultaneously. This can speed up the development process and lead to faster delivery times. Last but not least, MVC enhances testability. The separation of concerns makes it easier to write unit tests for each component. This leads to higher code quality and reliability, ensuring your application runs smoothly and as expected. Now that we've covered the advantages, let's briefly touch on the implementation of MVC. Many web development frameworks such as Spring MVC for Java, Django for Python, and Ruby on Rails for Ruby follow the MVC pattern. They provide ready-to-use tools and conventions for implementing each component of MVC, making your job a lot easier. However, MVC can also be implemented without using a framework. You can do this by organizing your code into separate model, view, and controller classes and defining how they interact with each other. And there you have it! 
a brief yet comprehensive look at MVC architecture, a cornerstone of modern web application design.